Okay, to sketch the graph of a function, we need nine pieces of information. We need the domain. We need the x and y intercepts. We need to know about any vertical asymptotes. We need to know the end behavior. We need to know the critical points, increasing, decreasing behavior, relative extrema, concavity, and inflection points. Okay, let's sketch a graph of this function right here. We'll start with the domain. Since this is a polynomial, we know its domain is all real numbers. Next, let's move to the intercepts. Well, the x-intercepts are the values that make this function equal to 0. So we know when x is 1, it's equal to 0. Also, when x is negative 5, the function is equal to 0. To get the y-intercepts, we substitute 0 for x. So we have 0 minus 1, which is negative 1 squared, and that's positive 1, times 0 plus 5, which is 5. Okay, so 1 times 5 is equal to 5. So 5, oops. So 0, comma 5 is the y-intercept. Okay, next we move to vertical asymptotes. Well, polynomials have no asymptotes. Also, we know the domain is all real numbers, so there's no way we could have vertical asymptotes. And now we move to n behavior. We want to determine what happens to f of x as x goes to infinity, and what happens to it as x goes to negative infinity. Let's start with x going to positive infinity. If we have a super huge number and we subtract 1 from it, it's still going to be super huge, and we square it, it's going to be super huge and positive. Also, we have super huge plus 5 is super huge. So we have a positive super huge number times a positive super huge number, and that tells us that the function is going to positive infinity as x goes to positive infinity. Okay, if you're not familiar with end behavior of uh, polynomials, you can take a look at my video called the end behavior of polynomial functions. Okay, now as x goes to negative infinity, this first piece here, when we square it, is going to go to positive infinity. This piece here is going to go to negative infinity. So we have something going to positive infinity times something going to negative infinity, and so net, net that's going to go to negative infinity. Okay, next we need to find the critical points. And to do that, we need to differentiate this function here. So we're going to do that using the product rule. Okay, if we apply the product rule, we get this. And we can now factor out an x minus 1. And we get this. And so now we just clean up the inside. So we get f prime of x is 3 times the quantity x minus 1 times the quantity x plus 3. Okay, so the critical points are the values of x that make this either 0 or undefined. So this is equal to 0 when x is either 1 or negative 3. This is always defined, so the only critical points are coming from these two numbers. Okay, when we list the critical points here, we actually want to list the y value also because it's going to be giving us a specific point on the graph. Okay, so when x is 1, we plug into the original function to find the y value. So when x is 1, we have 1 minus 1 squared, which is 0, times 1 plus 5, so that's equal to 0. We also knew it was an intercept from up here. Also, we need to find out the y value when x is negative 3. Okay, if we plug negative 3 in for x up here, we get 32. Okay, now we need to talk about the increasing decreasing behavior, so we need to make a sign chart for y prime. So we put these spots, 1, where f prime is 0, and negative 3, where f prime is 0. And we choose test points to figure out whether f prime is positive or negative in between. Okay, if we choose these test values down here, we get this sign chart for f prime. So we see that f is increasing from negative infinity to negative 3 and from 1 to infinity, and it's decreasing from negative 3 to 1. Okay, so we just write down that information right here. 
Okay, next for relative extrema, we see that the function is going from increasing to decreasing when x is negative 3, so that gives us a relative maximum. And we go from decreasing to increasing when x is equal to 1, so that gives us a relative minimum. Okay, the last two things we need to do are to find concavity and inflection points. So we need to find the second derivative of the function up here. To get the second derivative, we are going to use the product rule again. The alternative is to just multiply this out and use the simple power rule. Okay, if we use the product rule, we get 3 times the derivative of x minus 1, which is 1, times the function x plus 3, plus this function, 3 times x minus 1, times the derivative of this one. So we just clean that up a bit. So if we multiply it out and clean it up, oops, yes, that should be, so we factor out a 6, and we get 6 times the quantity x plus 1. Okay? So now we need to find the concavity of the function, which means we need to make a number line for the second derivative. So we start by marking on the number line everywhere that the second derivative is either 0 or undefined, and that only happens at negative 1. Okay, so this indicates that we're making a sign chart for the second derivative, and this indicates a 0 there, indicates that the second derivative is 0 there. Now we just need to choose test points to see where f prime is, f, I'm sorry, where f double prime is positive and where it's negative. So here's the sign chart for f double prime, and we find that f is going to be concave down from negative infinity to negative 1, and concave up from negative 1 to infinity. Okay, so here you see that c, c period d period means concave down, so it's concave down from negative infinity to negative 1, and cu means concave up, so it's concave up from negative 1 to infinity. And we see that when x is equal to negative 1, the concavity changes, so we have a, a point of inflection where x equals negative 1. And again, we, uh, we want the y value here because we want to plot this point on the graph, so we take the x-coordinate of negative 1 and plug it into the original function. If we do that, we get negative 1 minus 1, which is negative 2, square that and get 4, times negative 1 plus 5, which is also 4. So 4 times 4 is 16. And so we have an inflection point when x is negative 1 and y is 16. Okay, so now we're going to take all of this information here and use it to sketch the graph of the function. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is plot the intercepts. And then we'll also plot the critical points and the inflection points. And now we essentially need to connect the dots. Okay, so we need to arrive at this first point moving from left to right. And so to see how we arrive there, we, well, we know we're either going to fall to get to it or we're going to rise to get to it. We know that f of x is going to negative infinity as x goes to negative infinity. So as x goes more and more in this direction, the graph is falling toward negative infinity. And this point here is an intercept. Okay, it's, it's not, uh, it doesn't correspond to a max or a min. So I know that the function is just going to shoot straight up through it. And now I need to arrive at this point here. x is negative 3, y is equal to 32. That from right here, we know is a relative maximum. And since this is a polynomial, we know it's going to be smooth, so it's going to look like that. So to arrive to x equals negative 3, we know we're concave down, and we know we're increasing. So it's going to look something like this. Okay, now we need, to, we need to arrive at x equals negative 1. Well, we know we're decreasing there, from all the way from negative 3 all the way to 1, and we are still concave down. Okay, so we're concave down, and we reach x equals negative 1. Now we need to reach x equals 0. Well, we're still decreasing, but from negative 1 on, we're concave up. So we're concave up until we reach that. And now we need to reach x equals 1. Well, we're still decreasing, and we're still concave up. So we go nice and smooth through there, 
and then we hit x equals 1. And we know that x equals 1 is a relative minimum, so we know the graph is going to go like that there. From 1 to infinity, we're increasing and we're concave up. So we just finish off our graph by going like that. So this right here gives a rough sketch of the graph of this function.